Welcome to Opalize TV. Today I'm in Sydney, together with Ross Pilema. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Pengana. Pengana is one of the longest running hedge funds down here in Australia. Ross, tell me a bit about your background and the history of Pengana and what you're doing at the moment. My personal uh, history is that uh, prior to starting Pengana in 2002, I was an investment banker at Goldman Sachs, working in providing advice, M&A and capital raising advice to funds management companies. I returned from New York to Australia in 2002 and decided to set up Pengana together with the ex-chairman of Goldman Sachs in Australia, whose name is Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm subsequently went on to become the leader of the opposition Liberal Party in Australia and at that time it decided that it, you know to sell out of the of the business being a politician it made, made sense for him to do that and National Australia Bank bought into the business and they currently own a 49% uh, stake in Pengana. Pengana has been going now for over 10 years it um, is a diversified group we have five strategies that we run they're all focused on the Asia Pacific region some form or other and are all absolute return hedge funds uh, style investing. We operate in Australia, at Sydney, Melbourne and also have, have uh, offices in Singapore and we run about a billion dollars across the group. Russ, tell me more about the five different strategies that you run. So our five strategies are run separately by separate teams and they all do quite different activities. So in no particular order, our Asian special event strategy, it's run between Sydney and uh, Singapore. It, it invests in events across the Asia, the Asia region, including Japan all the way down to, down to Australia. And that strategy has been going for several years now. We've never had a negative year, including 2008. The fund has been positive. And we run just a bit under $100 million in that strategy. The, the two key fund managers, one is based in Sydney, whose name is Antonio Moroni. Antonio has been doing running special event strategies for many years. His partner in, uh, based in Singapore, uh, Vikas Kumra, Vikas has been with the team now for uh, close to five years. It's a team of five and uh, you know, running a very, I guess, conservatively managed strategy, aiming to get 10 to 15% type returns from the strategy. The uh, second strategy that I'll mention is a global resources long short equity strategy. As we know, uh, resources are going through a very, very tough time at the moment. In fact, equities in, in resources are, are down at the same levels that they were back in 2008. So it's potentially an interesting time to get back into equities. We, don't, we never like to predict what will happen to markets, but it's fair to say on a historical basis, um, the, the, uh, the sector uh, has some attraction. And even though investors have been fleeing the space, you know, because of the potential for upside in, in the strategy and, and when that market moves, it moves very, very quickly. And we are starting to see some investors nibble at that strategy now. And that, that could be interesting for the next few years. We have a Australian uh, equities market neutral strategy. That strategy is somewhat quant based. What would be thought of, I guess, by most people as a quant type strategy. That strategy has been going for five years now. Also never had a negative year to date. And annualizing you know, high single digits with very low volatility. It's the newest of our strategies, the smallest of our strategies. But we're also starting to see some interest in, especially in that end of the market, which is beta neutral in, an, in the Australian marketplace, really uncorrelated to any other asset classes around the world. We have an Aussie equity long only strategy, but absolute return focused. And we do use some 
hedging strategies and particularly the use of options in that strategy. That strategy is about to hit its fifth year anniversary. It's actually in the uh, various tables, it's the number one performing strategy in the Australian marketplace for, uh, for that five year period. And that's a great fund for investors who are interested in looking at the Australian marketplace who would like exposure to this market, which I think is, is recognised as being an interesting market in that it's a very, it's a, it's a market that's really withstood the last couple of years extremely well. Australia never went into a recession post-2008 and we've got plenty of growth upside from, this, from the internal market but also especially from the region in which we're at and our resource base etc. Finally, the original fund that we started, kicked off with, was a, um, a small companies fund and that fund is uh, about nine years old now and actually over the nine year period is the leading small cap fund in the Australian marketplace as well as a great performing fund. The thing which we're most pr proud about in the group is the performance of the funds in their, in their various categories and each one of them is one of the top funds or one, you know, certainly a top quartile uh, performer in their various categories. Russ, tell me, who is your investor base and what are some of the trends that you have been observing? We have four key segments in our investor base. The largest of our uh, markets is actually the Australian retail investor market. Australia is quite different to other markets around the world whereby retail investors can quite easily invest uh, in hedge fund type strategies. There's no specific requirements for hedge fund investors, uh, for hedge funds over and above those requirements for long only uh, style managers. So obviously we have to be registered by the Australian regulator, which is a, quite a tough regulatory regime. But once you've done that, um, there's no restrictions on uh, going off the retail market. We have the exact same regulatory oversight as for a long only mutual, mutual fund type, type manager. We particularly like that market because it's very well diversified and we, don't, we are not subjecting ourselves to you know, large client risk and the risk of withdrawals. It's very sticky money. The flows from our clients are underpinned by what we call the uh, superannuation legislation in Australia. Superannuation is the uh, pension uh, system in Australia and it's mandated that in all employees in Australia have to pay 9% of what they earn into their pension schemes. This is actually increasing to 12% over the next few years or it's hoped that it will and this provides a very good inflow to the savings market yeah, and into the mutual fund fund management market. The flows from superannuation investors are very sticky flows and we particularly like that it underpins the majority of the fund in all our strategies. The second element is the high net worth market in Australia. That's um, also a good market for us to tackle and we, we have a fair amount of our money coming from that market as well. The Australian institutional market which is dominated by the large superannuation funds is a very large market. It's one of the largest markets globally. We, and, and it is fertile ground for fund managers. Most of the smaller fund managers have, a, have difficulty in tackling that market because usually the superannuation funds like to invest with larger, more mega style funds than smaller, smaller funds. But there are opportunities there but you do obviously have to work hard at that market and have to have quite long track records in order to be, to be able to be successful in, in getting money from the superannuation funds. And also the fees are usually a fair bit lower in that marketplace than they are in the, the retail or high net worth market. We also spend a lot of our time uh, focusing on uh, global hedge fund uh, investors. We, uh, each of our teams who are tackling this market would do a lot of traveling every year, probably you know, three, four times a year, would go around the world and, and market to various hedge fund investors, be they family offices, institutions, fund of hedge funds, etc. And we, we obviously attend the various prime broker conferences that we think are applicable to our funds. We 
we have a, a Cayman Island structure for our Asia Special Events Fund and uh, we also offer separate accounts for our, for our various other funds um, and in some instances are on um, platform. Just talking about our funds, the, uh, in no particular order. So the first one, we see very good flows from our retail uh, client base and because of the uh, superannuation requirement in Australia and the inflows from superannuation, we see a very constant inflow from those, from those clients. And it's also increasing a lot as the markets have gone up and I think investors are in general a little bit scared of, of the markets at the moment. They've tended to be, to have increased interest in looking at strategies which have good downside protection. All of our strategies have, are focused on downside protection and so we find that we, we have increasing interest as the markets have, uh, have been going up. In terms of the um, offshore hedge fund base, a few years ago, or actually pre-2008, uh, there was a lot of offshore investors who were interested in, in investing in Australia. There used to be a lot of travel to Australia. There used to be some good hedge, hedge fund conferences based in Australia. After 2008, that largely dried up. A lot of in investors withdrew from, from Australian funds. I guess it was harder to do due diligence. There was less money around. A lot of the Australian funds tend to, tend to be smaller in size. And so for all those reasons, um, there was a bit of an exodus of international investors from Australian fund managers in, in the hedge fund space. We found over the last 12, 18 months that those investors appear to be coming back. We've seen a lot of interest in our strategies. We're getting a lot of visitors uh, to our offices in Australia. Actually more probably to our offices in Singapore, where there are more investors going through Singapore than there are through Australia. But still in Australia there have been a definite increase in the amount of international visitors that we've got here. And that looks very encouraging. I think the probably the biggest difficulty Australian hedge funds face is getting the investors here to actually complete their investigations, to do proper due diligence, to take to take a hard look at the funds. In you know, five, six years ago, investors would come out because there'd be a lot of Australian hedge funds that they'd want to take a look at. So they could actually send a team down here to investigate and do due diligence on more than just one fund. A lot of that activity dried up. The amount of funds that are in operation now compared to what it was five years ago, I think it's a much smaller market. And so investors, the interest in actually coming down here and spending the time and effort to come to Australia has been problematic. But I think as the industry has picked itself up again, I think in general, Australian hedge funds have performed pretty well. And so I think the interest is, you know, not just in ourselves, but also in, the, in this marketplace in general. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that that continues and that, you know, all the, all the hedge funds in this marketplace do well so we can attract investors down here. So Ross, you have worked internationally, but you set up your business here in Australia over 10 years ago. From your experience, what are some of the strengths of the Australian financial industry? Yeah, look, set, setting up the business, yeah, most people um, get a smile on their face when they hear that we've set up in Australia and, and think that the reason is because it's a beautiful place to live. And it sure is, you know, Sydney, Sydney is a wonderful place uh, to, it, to be based. But the real reason why we've set up here um, is because of the great uh, pool of talent in this marketplace. And even if you look globally at various hedge funds and fund managers around the world, there's a lot of Australians who have got very prominent positions. A lot of the great fund managers are Australian. And I think it's because Australia has quite a long fund management tradition. There's a lot of money especially from the superannuation market that's invested in fund managers over here. And so there's a lot of experience, a lot of activity in this market. I also think that the education system in Australia is good. Um, it produces some very good fund managers, especially the focus on uh, accounting in this marketplace. You'll find a lot of the fund managers here do have accounting uh, backgrounds. And I think that has just produced a lot of good fund managers and the other ingredient to this is the Australian spirit. There's a great spirit of getting things done 
and making things happen. And Australians love a challenge. And if the challenge is investigating a stock, creating a, a fund, outperforming, etc., uh, they're up for that. And so what you find is, it's, I think a combination of all those factors has, uh, has produced some great fund managers. I think also being in Australia uh, gives you a different perspective on the world. So if you're based in New York or based in London, you probably are hearing the same things, doing the same things, seeing the same things as, as the other fund managers. Whereas when you're based in Australia, you, there's this lack of proximity and you probably need to think a little bit outside of the box. And I think that also helps distinguish, distinguish Australian fund managers.